just got rid of idea pins a while ago. It's actually been well over a year. And when I say got rid of them, I don't mean like fully. You can probably even find them still if you have legacy accounts. However, when they collapsed idea pins into just pins, they left us with two specific pin formats. One is an image pin, which is what you would expect, and the other is a video pin, which is also what you would expect. I honestly wish it was just this way the entire time, but here we are, years later, and we still have this little thing in some of our accounts called idea pins. They are, however, linkable, you can only do images or videos, and you can't do the multi-slide format like you used to with old idea pins. However, today I want to walk you through what the new pin formats are. They really are just image pins and video pins, but I'm going to talk you through the best practices using them, example cases of what you can do with each kind, all of that good stuff. So we can lay to rest the different pin formats that we can use in our Pinterest marketing strategies going forward. In 2024, this really has been simplified down to two. You have image pins and you have video pins, and then with in each of those pin formats, there are other creative types that you can explore and test around with. And I'm gonna walk you through what those look like now. So for image pins specifically, the sizing is 1000 by 1000, which is a one-to-one, 1000 1, by 1500 or 1080 by 1920. The larger or the longer you go with your pin type, the more at risk you are actually of getting cut off in the feed on mobile specifically. I've never really found that to be the case over on Pinterest within the home feed on web. I've never seen pins get cut off in the feed like this right here is a, you know, 19, a 1080 by 1920. This is an Instagram reel that's repurposed to be a Pinterest pin. Now this is an ad, so it's going to show all of it. But you can also see that this is that same format size there, and that's not an ad, and it's not getting cut off on, on desktop. But on mobile, you do risk your pins getting cut off that are longer. So back to pin formats. Within image pins, those are your sizes. Now, your styles or the, the creative types that you can kind of explore within this are pins with text overlay, where you can put an image in there and you can add a call to action or whatever you want to do. You can do infographic style pins where you do steps and you also have a text overlay and you can direct traffic that way. Now these are highly savable and people will save them. They may not click on them, but they will save them. And what that's gonna do is in the home feed, once they save a pin, they're gonna start to see more of other people or more of your content from, from you in their home feeds. So keep that in mind that not every single pin type is necessary for driving traffic. Some of them have different goals. Pins with text overlay are obviously traffic drivers. These can be traffic drivers, but they can also be just something that drives a lot of engagement. Now the last format, which isn't really suggested for everybody, this is more for creative businesses like photographers, videographers, or people in the fashion jewelry type space, the space where your image can really sell what you're talking about. So this example here would be like if this backpack were for sale and you wanted to showcase a lifestyle image of someone using your product in the wild. This is actually shot in Arizona because those are saguaro <laughs> cactuses. I have these right outside my office and you want to showcase your product and you want your product to speak for itself. That would be a really great instance of you using an image pin without any text on it. And you would have to rely heavily on your title and description to do the legwork for you. Now, the last format I wanna to talk to you about is not necessarily a format I'm suggesting people do for their organic marketing strategies, but it seems as though we are getting the carousel style pins back. I have them back on my account that is from 2017. I have them on a couple of other accounts as well that are newer, and these are actually standard image pins but they are in a carousel and right here i know you probably can't see it i'm going to try to zoom in and i'm going to move over on this screen here you can see this little arrow right here and then you can see the two little dots i've uploaded two images and this is just a test and i'm going to show you what this looks like in the wild and these are just single image pins and they have turned into a carousel and both images you can customize them to go to the same link or different links so if you had maybe five different Pinterest 
blog posts that you wanted to send people to, you could send them to five different posts. I don't really suggest doing that. The only instance in which I would actually suggest using carousel pens would be for ads. And that is really if you're looking to promote, um, you know, a sale or some sort of product and you need people to see multiple different panels of it. And let me just scroll through here and let's see if we can find a carousel pin. Here we go. So Fidelity is doing a carousel pin and you can see on ads, it puts it up at the top, the little scroll wheel, but it's, it's kind of showcasing you possibilities if you were to invest with Fidelity. Relaxing realities, adventurous, unexpected, and it says unlock your futures. So meaning that you could have multiple different futures. And if you click on these different slides, it's probably going to take you to a different URL. So it's going to take you to information if you want a relaxing future. If you want a adventurous, like all those different things. I've also seen travel companies use these carousel style pens before. So keep that in mind. If you have different things that you want to use for advertising, carousels might be a really great option. Now let's go look at that carousel pin in the wild. I have this on a test board that I created at secret board, and I just want to show you how it behaves. So simply put, there is just a scroll wheel. If it's organic, it's in the middle. If it's ads, it's at the top and it's going to take you to the destination because this one image, both images, but this one carousel pin is linked to one URL on my website. Okay. If you're looking to create one of these, I just want to walk you through what this looks like because this is the one instance in which you might want to know. This isn't a tutorial for how to create pins, but it's definitely a tutorial for <laughs> the different pin formats. You're simply just going to drag those images over till the top the box turns blue. Then this little thing pops up and it says collage or carousel. I'm not including collage pins in here because I don't really see an instance where we would want to use those. However, if you're interested in learning more, I will figure it out for you. You just have to let me know. Okay, moving on to video pins. Video pins, there is a lot more information on this slide. They are four seconds to five minutes. They've recently changed the time frame on them again. The file types are MP4, M4V, or MOV. So this is an Android file type, this is an Apple file type, and this is a universal file type. These are the sizes. You can do the same sizes for video pins. And then I have a few examples for you. So I left this carousel example up because you can actually turn videos into carousels as well. Now, I have Instagram Reel examples on the screen. So both of these are Instagram Reel examples. But if you are a creator and you sell products, you can also do product style videos for your video pins and you can link those. So this one's actually linked to Instagram. I would actually change the link so you can reference my Instagram video for how to connect Instagram and Pinterest on those best practices. But I would change the links to go to your destination if you are repurposing Instagram Reels. And then the last one here, this is actually a Canva screenshot. That would be if you were to animate a pin and you were to download this animated pin then as an MP4 file. So we would go to download and it's gonna default to MP4. That is what I would suggest you do. And you would download that one animated pin. Now there is something very important that you need to do if you are using animated pins for Pinterest. So I want to show you actually what that looks like. And this is another instance of me showing you what to do here. I, don't, I normally would reserve this for those particular videos, but you have to do this step. Otherwise it's going to look like trash. So our video is downloaded. I'm going to drag it in. You see this video cover right here. You have to select a video cover or your pin might risk a black screen when it publishes to Pinterest. So the first thing your pinners are going to see is a black screen. Now you would think that might disrupt the feed, but it's not going to go the way you want it to go. Almost all the pins that I've mistakenly uploaded and they've been a black screen because I haven't cho chosen a video cover, the engagement levels are incredibly low on them. So people do not stick around to see what's behind the black screen. Okay. It's not a scratch off ticket. So this is the idea pin um, uploader. So this is like the V2 scheduler. You're going to click edit cover and it's going to pop up another screen and you're going to pick a cover here. And then obviously on mobile, you will need to, if you upload a pin on mobile, you will also need to upload the cover there. 
Now, I do not suggest using any third-party apps or schedulers to create your video pins. Always upload them natively through Pinterest. That way you get the highest quality format. When they go through a third-party tool like Tailwind, Planoly, Later, those scheduler tools, you're going to upload that file to the scheduler tool. Then it has to send it over the server to the schedule or to the platform and the quality degrades over time. And we don't want that. So I always suggest my clients and students just go straight to Pinterest and use the native scheduler for all videos. Now, those are your Pinterest formats for pins. If you have any questions or if you have any things that you want to talk about related to pin formats, please let me know. Now that you know exactly what pin formats to expect when creating pins for your Pinterest marketing strategy, head right on over here to learn more about using them in your Pinterest marketing strategy and getting results that you desire.